My name is Eric Ryder. And my name is Lucas McCord. And we did our group, the group four project is taking the average temperature of the world. The purpose of our group four project was to develop and test a method for calculating the average air surface temperature of the world at a given date and time. Okay. To collect our data, we used the Wonder Map on www.wonderground.com to collect five spaced out points on each continent. We collected data for 12 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, December 23, 2011. We chose the points to be spaced out on each continent and for each ocean randomly, just spaced out. We then averaged the temperatures of each continent and the average temperature of all the data we had collected, regardless of whether or not it was, wh whether or not, regardless of where it was from. We did this to compare how it would affect the data. So then this here is Wonder Map, and to collect our data, we would just choose one of these points on here that would pop up on the map. And when that pulled up, well, this one didn't work, no data. We would <laughs> click on this one, and then we'd click up it, here. It. it would bring us to another page. And then we would have to choose the date, December 23rd, 2011. Then view, and then we, where we got our data from, we'd scroll down, and we would take it from this first point here at the top that would be closest to 0000, zero, zero, zero GMT, which is the time that we were recording our data for. And then we, this is the point that we used, would be this one here. For our raw, this is our raw data, our raw data for Europe, where 43.7 degrees Fahrenheit, 32.7 degrees Fahrenheit, 25.7 degrees Fahrenheit, 24.8 degrees Fahrenheit, and 33.4 degrees Fahrenheit. In Asia, we got 65.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 15.8 degrees Fahrenheit, 6.3 degrees Fahrenheit, and then 39.2 degrees. Our four oceans, we took four points, which were for the Pacific Ocean, we got 82.0 degrees Fahrenheit, 77.0 degrees Fahrenheit, 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit, and for the Arctic, we got 65.0 degrees Fahrenheit. In North America, we have 32 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 11 degrees Fahrenheit, 1 degree Fahrenheit, 22.8 degrees Fahrenheit, and 25 degrees Fahrenheit. For South America, we got 77.0 degrees Fahrenheit, 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 44.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. In Australia, we decided to only take three data points because it's much smaller compared to all of the other continents, and it's really only one country. So we got 83.5, 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit, and 68.5. In Africa, we got 46.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 63.0 degrees Fahrenheit, 54.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 70.1 degrees Fahrenheit, and 61.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so this is our process data where we took all of our raw data for the different um, continents and averaged them. And then down in the bottom right corner, we have the total average, which averaged the averages of each continent. And we ended up with 41 degrees Fahrenheit as an average for the world temperature. And then just because we were curious, we thought it would be interesting to take all of the, just all of the temperatures and then average them out, which gave us 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So instead of taking the average for each continent and then averaging those ones, we just have an average for all of the data points that we collected. And we found that it was a little bit different, but still close. Okay, our two averages that we calculated were the 41 degrees Fahrenheit from the first graph and the 38 degrees Fahrenheit that we just talked about. The 38 degrees Fahrenheit was closer to what we found other groups had gotten, so we think that this is more accurate. This makes us think that we should give a weighted percentage to each continent and ocean based on the percent area that it takes of the world. Some of the limitations that we came across when doing this ex experiment was that we probably didn't take enough data points for each continent because we just we have five data points for each continent with the exception of Australia where we have three which is basically five cities to represent the whole continent and then another one was that 
the data was not weighted based on the size of the continent, which may have changed what our average temperature was had we um, average, or weighted the temperatures based on the size of the continents. And we also found that some of the data points were not calculated at 12 a.m. GMT on the wonder map, and they'd be like a couple, some of them were maybe like an hour off or something, which hopefully didn't make too much of a difference. And then the other limitation or flaw in our experiment would be that we chose the data points at random and they weren't evenly spread out, but we tried to get them as spread out as possible based on the continent. To improve our data, we would assign weighted averages to each continent like we discussed earlier. We would also collect more data points because with only so few data points that we have currently, it might not be perfectly accurate as much as we would like to. We would also try to divide the continents into grids based on the latitude and longitude in order to make it so that it is evenly spread out as opposed to the way that we did this time which was choosing the locations in each continent randomly.